Hey, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about top 5 best robot vacuums for any home. Starting at number 5. Eufy Robovac G30 Edge Robot Vacuum. The G30 Edge is the least expensive model from our test, but you wouldn't know that by how it cleaned our test corrals. It was slightly slower than the others, sure, yet it effectively and methodically vacuumed each area. It left barely a trace of debris on both the carpet and laminate floor and missed some rice transitioning from the floor to the mat in the concrete area. We did notice the G30 Edge bump things slightly harder than the other vacuums, not surprising, since its navigation is an enhanced version of Bump and Go. Despite having that lower tech Nevi system, this Eufy seemed remarkably efficient. Leaving the dock, it immediately started a straight out and back pattern, moving left to the wall with each pass. It then bumped the wall in a couple of places, confirming its location, before returning to the center. It continued out and back to the right wall, where it started around the perimeter to the lower left corner. It then began left and right passes from the front to the back, followed by the perimeter, ending with the lower right corner. Testing in our homes, we used the app to monitor progress in real time. While we could view completed vacuuming and maps in the cleaning history, we couldn't save or edit them. To set no-go zones, we laid down the included magnetic strip to create physical barriers. While this worked well, we did need to remember to put the strip in place every time we had the vacuum scheduled to clean. Coming at number 4. iRobot Roomba S9 Plus Robot Vacuum. The S9 Plus clocked the fastest time to finish the carpeted area, leaving just a trace of sawdust after 9 minutes. In the concrete area, it took more time navigating around the wooden stool but was delicate in doing so, cleaning around the legs thoroughly. Like the others, it did leave some rice at the edge of the floor mat. In the laminate corral, we couldn't find any debris except for a dusting of flour in one spot. Keep in mind that the S9 Plus has flexible ridges and paddles instead of bristles. This appeared to be a little less effective with very fine particles on the smooth, hard surface. We had the most difficulty discerning what the S9 Plus was actually doing. What initially appeared to be a random path, we realized, was a series of location exercises using VSLAM. It first moved left and right, bumping both sides in multiple places, and then it worked toward the corners, looping into them in a wide curve before moving tight in and backing out. Then it performed a trip around the perimeter, and then into the corners again. After all that, it moved to make left and right passes to cover the middle area. Finally, it vacuumed left and right of the dock. This Roomba has a slightly different design than most other robot vacuums, in that it has a flat front with squared off corners. We found two advantages of this, the first being that it got into corners better, and the second that it allows for wider brushes, about 30% so. At number 3. Shark AI Ultra Robot Vacuum. Shark's AI Ultra Robot Vacuum is a hands-off maintenance cleaner with a HEPA filter, making it a great option for pet owners. The AI Ultra can run unaided up to 60 days because the docking station empties the robot at the end of every cleaning cycle. After each stage of testing, we examined the vacuum's onboard dustbin after it self-emptied and found it clear of debris. We did note that there was always a small amount of dust residue sticking to the inside due to static electricity. When the docking station does need emptying, we found it best to do it into a large garbage can in the garage or outside, because dust can become airborne, which sort of defeats the advantages of the unit's onboard HEPA filter if done inside. On our various test surfaces, the AI Ultra performed equally well on hard and carpeted surfaces. It occasionally left a few grains of rice or a stray kidney bean in our admittedly heavily deposited debris, but no more than the other models. Initially, the app directs you to run an exploration slash mapping pass the first time you set it up in a new space. This allowed us to edit the map, adding no-go zones, carpet, and high traffic areas where it can increase suction. We could also assign areas to spot clean or have the AI Ultra make two passes instead of one. We also tested the obstacle avoidance features when navigating our space. As long as the obstacle was taller than the vacuum, the robot would stop and maneuver around it. When we laid a roll of packing tape on the floor, 
the vacuum pushed it around. So, the vacuum will pick up individual Lego bricks, but it will avoid your child's Lego castle. If these types of things are common in your house, you'll want to set up no-go zones for children's play areas. The AI Ultra will also function as a robotic mop, when you swap out its onboard dustbin with the water tanks and mop pad. Our muddy footprints were a lot to ask of it, but the AI Ultra did a good job of wiping the area clean, with just a couple of crumbs of dirt left behind. We did have to thoroughly clean the mop pad after the test, as it was caked with mud, but our test was beyond a normal mopping scenario. Number 2 of my list Yeedy Mop Station Pro Robot Vacuum Yeedy's Mop Station Pro is both a mop and a vacuum. With the large, rear dustbin attached, it works as a vacuum, running on a schedule you set to keep your house clean. When you want to mop, replace the dustbin with the mopping attachment that has two rotating, replaceable scrubbers. Unlike with other mopping robots, which require you to fill an onboard tank, we were surprised that it filled automatically from a reservoir in the docking station. We discovered the dock also has a tank to hold dirty water from rinsing the cloth scrubbers after mopping. During our mopping test, the Mop Station Pro performed well, scrubbing the laminate floor clean of our muddy footprints. The spinning scrubbing pads did kick some of the dried mud around, but our test pushes the limits of what we would expect the robot to mop up. While the floor was cleaned well, when we inspected the bottom of the robot, we needed to clean some mud off the wheels. In our own homes, we would normally grab a towel and quickly wipe up heavy mud before setting the robot mop loose to do its job. As a maintenance cleaner, the Mop Station Pro does a good job cleaning everyday types of drips, smudges, and marks on the floor. As a vacuum, it performed well in our testing on all surfaces. We observed no trouble transitioning from hard floors to area rugs or floor mats, and the Mop Station Pro generally moved through the test areas in a methodical manner. It occasionally left a couple of grains of rice or a stray kidney bean, mostly due to the side brush flinging them across hard, smooth surfaces, something we regularly see on all vacuums with side brushes. Paired with Yeedy's app, setup, navigation, and mapping were straightforward. We were able to create no-go zones, set auto carpet detection to bump up suction for rugs, and schedule cleanings. For $800, you get a lot of features with the Mop Station Pro. And as the name implies, this vacuum is more biased than most toward mopping. And number one. Roborock Roborock S7 Max Ultra Robot Vacuum and Mop Combo Roborock's S7 Max V replaces the S6 Max V we tested previously. This new generation improves upon the previous model with more suction, faster processing speed to recognize obstacles, and a fully automated dock. Overall, the vacuuming speed remained similar to the S6. In the laminate corral, it vacuumed everything clean, leaving no trace of the debris we had strewn. It finished our carpeted corral in just over 9 minutes, with barely a trace of sawdust left behind. In our concrete area, with the rice we spread, the side brush scattered a few grains, which then got left behind. The small traces of debris mist, as with other models tested, is largely a byproduct of the sheer volume of detritus we used in testing. Using both VSLAM and LiDAR to navigate, the S7 Max V started with a diagonal zigzag path, presumably scanning the surroundings. It then quickly went around the perimeter of the corral, following that up with a series of out and back passes moving across the whole space. The vacuum then performed a second pass of the perimeter, ending with a final out and back series of sweeps, crisscrossing the previous passes, and then returning to the dock to top off the battery. The more times it vacuumed the same space, the more precise and efficient the robot's path became. While the mopping was sufficient to clean up the muddy footprints we left in testing, the automated features of the docking station are what really impressed us. Aside from the robot vacuum self-emptying into the dock, the onboard mopping reservoir is automatically refilled from the dock. Plus, the dock rinses and cleans the mop pad with an automated, spinning brush, directing wastewater to its own tank. So, with an empty dustbin and a tank full of clean water, the robot can run up to 8 weeks unaided. The S7 Max V also pleased us during practical testing in our homes. In the Roborock app, we watched as the vacuum quickly created accurate maps of our rooms as it vacuumed in real time. 
It also recognized and avoided sneakers, a power strip, and some wooden prop dog poop we threw down, leaving icons on the maps indicating what obstacles were and where they were encountered, and the app, we could view saved maps in 2D or 3D formats, edit maps, add virtual walls, add no-go and no-mop zones, as well as create room-specific settings and cleaning schedules. Remarkably, you can also pull up live video from the robot while cleaning is in process, and even use it to place a video call to speak to whoever may be present in your home. Check out this video description for latest price and more informations. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe and stay tuned.